We're going to go ahead and take a look at the logic required to build our Excel worksheet for the lower of cost per market. To do this, let's go ahead and consider a series of replacement costs ranging from $10, which is below our designated floor, to $15, which is above our ceiling or net realizable value. Let's begin by considering the $10 replacement cost. The $10 replacement cost is below our designated floor. So we'll go with the floor of $10.25. At a replacement cost of $11, it falls between the floor and the ceiling, so it's an acceptable designated market, as is the $12, as is the $13. The $14 is right at our designated floor, so it doesn't matter whether we take the replacement cost or the ceiling. The $15, however, falls above our ceiling, so we will go with the net realizable value rather than the replacement cost. Now let's consider the logic that got us there. If we had asked the question, if the replacement cost is greater than the net realizable value, we see that's the case in only one situation. That was when we had a $15 replacement cost. So when the replacement cost was greater than net realizable value, in other words, the condition was true, we went with the net realizable value. That was the selection that we would make. So if the condition was true, we went with the net realizable value. In all of the other situations where the condition was false, let's go ahead and see what we went with. When we had a choice between the $10 and the $10.25, we took the larger of the two, the $10.25. When we had a choice between the $11 and the $10.25, again, we took the larger of two, the two, the $11. When we had a choice between the $12 and $10.25, again, we took the larger of the two, the $12. We took the maximum of the values. The same thing was true for the $13 and $14. So again, in terms of our if statement, if the condition was true, we took the ceiling, which was the net realizable value. If the condition was false, we took the larger of the replacement cost or the designated floor.